is Monday, July 17th, 2023. I'm Chris Remo, and welcome back to the New York Times Crossword Daily Solve. It's a Monday puzzle, so a themeless, relatively simple, approachable crossword is what we should have in store for us today. And this um, hopefully approachable, themeless, uh, not themeless, did I say themeless? I meant themed. It's a simple themed crossword, and it's been brought to us today by Kathleen Quinn, Quotidia File, Overfull Hitbox, and, as always, the invaluable Timothy Mark, the indomitable Shoalmaster, and the incredible Horn family. So thank you so much to the six of them, benefactors of the Daily Solve Patreon campaign, for their generous support in bringing us this series and sustaining this channel. I do very much appreciate that, and if you... Uh, would like to support this channel as well directly, I would really appreciate it. And that is at patreon.com slash daily solve or in the link in the description field underneath the video, where you can find the bonus videos that are available to patrons as well as for uh, benefactors, the let's check the crosses um, mug, official mug. And uh, thank you to everybody who has backed the Patreon campaign. Um, thanks also to everybody who subscribed to the channel. That is a big help and very nice and kind of you as well consider doing that. And um, also, you can join the Daily Solve Discord chat server. The link to that friendly chat community in the description, too. All right, let's get on to today's hopefully very uh, approachable and themed puzzle. It's the third construction, I believe, by Alexander Liebskind, and it was edited, as always, by Will Shorts. So let's see what's in store. Let's start solving. Baby's lightweight garment with snaps. Isn't that a onesie, probably? look at the crosses. Pod vegetable in gumbo. Yes, okra is very much associated with gumbo. And a part of speech that might be proper. You could have a proper noun referring to someone's name or a place name or a brand or something. Here we have Blank Franklin, gospel singing sister of Aretha. Oh, I should know this, uh, but I can't think offhand. Let's look at the crosses here. Kind of cuisine with kimchi. Well, Korean, oops, Korean cuisine it's famous uh, for kimchi, the uh, uh, delicious fermented dish. And then, so is it Aaron Franklin? I just can't remember. Two ingredient drink order. Oh, rum and, oh, Erma. Okay, now that I see it, I remember. But basically I had the whole word before I, before I remembered her name. Anyway, rum and coke is a two ingredient drink order. And it looks like that is thematic. Let's jump down to the revealer. I haven't done that in a while. Let's see what it says. Uh, Query of concern or a phonetic hint to two pairs of letters. Two pairs of letters, not words, appearing in 1724, 37, and 48 across. Interesting. Query of concern. Are you, are you maybe? Are you okay? Oh, well, oh, I see. Two pairs of letters. Yes, the are you and the okay. Are you okay? There we go. That's it. Okay, so presumably in each of these, we'll have the letters RU paired and the letters OK paired somewhere. Let's see. Medical school sub subject would be anatomy. Icon that lights up during a turbulent plane ride is a seat. Uh, oh, the seatbelt icon, of course. To, yeah. Indicates that you should put on your seatbelt. Distinctive effect of paint applied to a canvas. A uh, brush stroke, right? You can see the effect of the of the brushstroke in the sort of physical um, kind of topology of the paint. Finishes, uh, if something finishes, it ends up in a certain way. And the counterpart of trans and gender identity terminology would be cis, so cisgendered as opposed to transgendered. Uh, use a chair is to sit, simple as that. Diner seating option could be a booth as opposed to a chair. You could sit in the booth instead. Baby's dribble catcher could be a bib. And to vex somebody is to irk them. Minecart filler is ore. You could collect ore in a minecart. A meaty Mexican dish, a beef taco, I suppose. That looks most likely based on the crosses. 2016, uh, Denzel Washington, Viola Davis film, whose title refers to real and metaphorical barriers. That's Fences, which is an, ad uh, an adaptation of a play. Um, let's see. Lacks what it takes. If one lacks what it takes, one uh, cannot, I guess. I can't. She cannot do it. She lacks what it takes. Yeah, uh, that, I think that's correct. Bottom row PC key. <laughs> if I just look at it, there we go. Control. I was cheating slightly, I suppose. 
Um, and service centers for big rigs. Truck something. Truck stops, maybe? Zellweger, who played Judy Garland in 2019's Judy. It must be Renee Zellweger. There we go. Glasgow gal. So this is just referring to a common term used in Scottish English. Uh, a lass for a gal. Um, length times width for a rectangle. That is the formula to determine a rectangle's area. And convent residents are nuns, so they uh, members of a female religious order. Okay, bakery treats that are sweeter than their name suggests. Tarts, I suppose. Indeed, they don't taste tart. They don't have a sour taste. Well, they could. They actually, actually could have a sour taste, actually. But they're also sweet. Blunder is um, to err, to make a mistake. And poet Gertrude Gertrude Stein. Looks correct to me. Group with many Mideast members. Um, OPEC, so the uh, Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries. I'm pretty sure that, that's what that stands for. Atlantic or Pacific, either one of those is an ocean. And of course, because this is referring to Atlantic or Pacific rather than Atlantic and Pacific, it's not a plural clue, it is singular. Look out for that. Sch Oops. Scholastic Book Fair Organization is PTA, I suppose, the um, parent-teacher associations that could run a book fair at a at a school. All right, so here's one of these. How-to manuals. We need, what do we need? An RU and an OK. This looks like instruction book. Yes, so yes, we do have our RU and our OK. There we go. All right. Uh, Meryl with eight Golden Globes. Meryl Streep, a highly awarded actress. And a caboose's location is the rear of a train, for instance. Blank Suarez, tennis star with eight Grand Slam doubles titles. Oh no, my lack of sporting knowledge is, is rearing its head. Let's see. Spinning skewer, a spit um, on which you could cook meat, spinning, spinning the meat over a fire or other heat source, I guess. Spend some time in the sun, maybe. It could be tans. You could get a tan in the sun. And thorny sources of pride for a gardener. Rose, rose bushes, presumably full of thorns, but also very, very beautiful. Uh, China's Mao Zedong, they're simple enough. And uh, a Paolo Suarez. Okay, there we have it. Maybe I'll remember that name somewhere in the recesses of my mind for next time. Um, if something tilts sideways, it leans. And Frisbee Sport Ultimate is what they call it. I've always found that odd that the support, the sport gets to be called just Ultimate. Um, from Ultimate Frisbee, obviously. Um, I guess that's probably because Frisbee is a brand name, maybe. that's Maybe that's why the sport doesn't use that. I still find it funny. <laughs> All right. Regional flora and fauna are um, biota, so sort of the um, uh, life, the sort of, in, you know, life endemic to an area. All right, here we go. Artist and musician Yoko, certainly one of one of two, I would say, official solo musicians of the New York Times crossword, along with Brian Eno. It's Yoko Ono. Use a tab key, says, to indent. You could um, indent a line of text with the tab key. A recurring comical reference. Uh, well, we need our RU, so that goes here. A running, running joke, and joke has an OK in it. There we have it. All right, staircase part is mm, mm, I don't know. Why don't I see that? What is this? And the blank to know the difference, the end of the serenity prayer, the wisdom to know the difference. A very uh, good good piece of good piece of advice, or I guess it's not really advice, a good good observation about about life. Uh, that's the one that goes something like, grant me the This, oh, I don't remember. I remember the concepts you're differentiating, <clears throat> but I don't remember what you do to each one of them. It's something like the strength to change I, the things I can, the sort of, you know, uh, acceptance of those I can't and the wisdom to know the difference. Maybe maybe serenity is the second one. Anyway, it's the thought. If this, It's the thought of it that's valuable. Obviously not the specific words, which I have forgotten. Uh, staircase part is... 
a rise of a staircase? I'm still not seeing what it is. Boat's trail is its wake. Tennis great Arthur Ashe. Uh, sharp witted is keen. Staircase part, yeah, it doesn't riser. Once, once, yeah, Erst is an erstwhile. This happened. This happened once. Is this this used to happen? It once happened. Um, so this is riser staircase part. Okay, fair enough. Um, and then environmental activist activist Thunberg is Greta Thunberg. A bit of body ink is a tat a tattoo. To tell on someone is to rat on somebody, and. Uh, here we have H or the eta symbol in the Greek alphabet is eta, so the capital or lowercase eta, I suppose. And then uh, to go, if something, if food is to go bad, it, it rots. What French fries fry in, they fry in hot oil, of course. And one whose property is being held as debt security. Is that a, a leany, a, someone on whose home a lien has been placed? I think that's probably the answer. Uh, oops, informal term for college in Great Britain. That's uni. Oops, sorry, I keep hitting the microphone. I hope that's not coming too, too loudly. Um, anyway, uni for university is the informal term we're looking for here in Great Britain, um, as opposed to college, which has a different meaning. Under consideration is in flux, not in flux, in under consideration. It's in, it's under consideration. It's in, in mind, as in you're, you're actively considering it. It's in your mind. Let's see. If something's similar to something else, it's akin to it. Yes, this is looking right. Re if something's reasonable, you could say it's sane. Park name in London and Chicago is Hyde Park. Pageant accessory is a, uh, a sash. And someone could be wearing a sash in a beauty pageant or something. If something's yawn-inducing, it's boresome? That doesn't sound right. What is it? It's, hmm, let's keep looking. Cozy spot could be a nook. You could be, I don't know, reading or having breakfast in a nook. If wishes were horses, beggars would ride, goes the saying. And then big audio equipment brand, uh, Bose is a famous audio equipment brand. The sky's the limit, goes another common phrase. We have plenty of common phrases today. Atlanta-based network, this would be a television network, is TBS. I think the Turner Broadcasting System, I think. And oopsie-daisy, you might say. Uh, oh, this is boresome. Okay, yawn-inducing is boresome. There we go. All right. And it's a formation of that word I was less familiar with. And let's see if this is the correct solution. It is. So there we have it. That was the Monday crossword with our Are You OK theme that I, I skipped to the revealer. The real revealer, of course. I haven't mentioned revealers very often recently. That is the sort of explanatory clue and answer that uh, deconstructs or, or, or serves as a clue or an explanation for all of the theme answers in the grid. So here our are you okay referred to the phonetic hint to two pairs of letters, the are you and the okay. So we had our rum and coke, our brush stroke, our instruction book, and our running joke. And most of these rhymed, I suppose, because okay uh, so commonly occurs in cases where they are followed by an E to create that same oak um, sound, but not instruction book. Uh, anyway, there we have it. That was our Monday crossword. Let me know how you fared with this one. How did you find this relative to most Mondays? Easier, more difficult, about the same? Let's see, what do I think? I don't know, maybe maybe just a, a touch more challenging than an ordinary Monday. I don't know, I, I find Mondays are one of the days I, I find most difficult to judge in that respect. So let me know how you, how you fared with it. And now let's just glance at a few clues from yesterday's puzzle. So what do we have? Kathleen Quinn explains that knickers, N-I-C-K-E-R-S, is a term for a horse's low whinny, an animal on a monopoeia. There we go. Okay, fair enough. I was wondering about, about that. Uh, I don't know that that was a, a phrase I've come across before, or if I have, it would have been glancingly. Uh, Brian Spurrier um, unpacks the uh, APAC acronym, A-I-P-A-C, the American Israel Public Affairs Committee. There we go. And Brian Spurrier goes on to point out that dog DNA tests, which uh, I was wondering about those during yesterday's solve because there was a clue about testing a mutt's DNA. Uh, Brian says dog DNA tests have become somewhat of a fad recently with people liking to share the exact percentage of each breed their dog is. I say this as someone who got their dog DNA tested. <laughs> so there we go. Nick Six points out that my uh, the spelling of empanada, which I misspelled E-M-P-E-N-A-N, 
ADA, AD, <laughs> my goodness. I misspelled it as E M P E N A D A, whereas it should be spelled E M P A N A D A. And she pointed out it needs to be that way because the P A N bit represents this, is, is derives from the Spanish word for bread. Of course, it makes sense. Should have, should have caught that at the time. And finally, Rabbit points out that a Waldorf cocktail is rye whiskey, absinthe, sweet vermouth, and Angostura bitters, which sounds very nice. And she says, but I love telling green bartenders it's a Waldorf salad and whiskey. Of course, when I, when I saw the clue, my first thought was Waldorf salad, but uh, no, it's this very nice sounding um, absinthe and rye cocktail. All right. Thank you for that. And that's that for today's video. Of course, I will be back tomorrow with the Tuesday crossword. Should be another relatively approachable themed grid. Hope you join me for that. But until then, please do have an excellent remainder of your Monday. Take care.